Hello everyone. In this video lecture, let's try to understand Hungarian method, which is used to solve assignment problem. So let's begin. Before we start, let's have a recap of what we have done so far. So we have defined a balanced assignment problem, which means the number of persons should be equal to the number of jobs. And we have also seen the LPP formulation of an assignment problem. So now we want to focus on solving this balanced assignment problem. And for that, you recall the representation of an assignment problem as a matrix in which the rows are representing the resources or the persons and the columns are the jobs. And these TIJs are nothing but the time taken by ith resource to finish jth job. So the question is how to make an assignment. So that means we want to now mark the allocations in the cells. We want to denote that which person has been assigned which job. So instead of writing the value of the allocation variable inside the cells, we use a symbolic representation because this xij can take only two values, either one or zero. So if the job is allocated, we know that value of xij is 1. If the job is not allocated, the value is 0. So instead of writing those 1s and zeros, we use this way to mark the assignment. We draw a box around the entry written inside the cell to denote that this particular job has been assigned to this person. For example, making a box around T11 means that first job has been assigned to first person. Similarly, making box around other entries will mean the same thing. So, like making a box around T23 means the second person has been assigned third job and so on. So, this is just to tell you that how to do the assignment, how to show that this assignment has been made. But on what basis we have to decide these boxes that where to put these boxes that will be decided by Hungarian method. So unlike transportation problem where the solution techniques were broadly divided into two steps initial basic feasible solution and then the optimal solution here we get the optimal solution directly in one go. Although you will notice that this is also an iterative method but still it is different from the techniques which we used in transportation problem. So I'll be explaining you the technique of Hungarian method through this example. So there's a workshop which contains four persons and they're available for working for four kind of jobs and only one person can work on any one job. This is the same thing we already know which is the information coming with every problem and we are given the cost of assigning the jobs. So instead of giving us the times, they have given us cost. So this is also something I've explained you earlier that it's not necessary every time the data given will be the times. The data can also represent the cost. But the sense of the question still remains the same. We still want to minimize it. So I've written the given values in the matrix representation. So let's learn the step-by-step -step technique of Hungarian method. So what is the first thing we have to do? We have to check the problem is balanced or not. So it should be a square matrix. The number of persons should be equal to the number of jobs. And which is true here because we have four persons and four jobs. So that means this is a balanced problem. Right now I'm not taking up the case. What happens if it is not balanced? We'll take up that later. So the next step is you have to compute the reduced matrix. So what is the meaning of this reduced matrix? That will be clear to you soon. But before that, you have to follow these steps. So you have to find the minimum of each row and write it in front of each row on the right hand side. So for example, the in the first row, the minimum value is 20. In the second row, the minimum is 15. In the third row it is 17 and in the fourth row minimum is 23. 
so what we are going to do with these minimum values when we have obtained them next step is we have to subtract these minimum values from all the values in the rows row wise for example in the first row we should be writing values 20 minus 20 25 minus 20 22 minus 20 and 28 minus 20 so you subtract the respective minimums from the respective rows this way you will update your matrix so after doing this step each row will have at least one zero and that zero is coming at exactly the place where the minimum was there and now we have to repeat the process for columns and we have to do it only for those columns where no zero has been created after the first step so for example you look at the first and second column there are two two zeros in both but in third and fourth column no zero has been created so for third and fourth column i have to find the column minima and do the similar step so the column minima is turning out to be one and one for third and fourth column respectively so you do the subtraction in a similar way as you did for the rows and this way you will also get updated matrix so after doing this step what matrix you will be getting is called the reduced matrix and you can see now what is a special thing about this matrix that each row and each column is having at least one zero value and why we are actually creating zeros because zeros are going to represent the minimum cost the minimum time because zero is coming at that place where the values are minimum so our zero will be actually the point where we need to make the assignment so reduced matrix we have got now we have to start making the assignments so you have to start row wise so starting from first row then moving to second row third row and so on but remember if any particular row at any step contains more than one zero then you leave it for the time being and move to next row so here if you look at the first row the first row is having exactly one zero so i will be assigning at that particular zero which is present in the first row in the cell one comma one so i've just explained you how to make the assignment you have to draw a box around that zero so this means first person has been assigned first job and since the the first job has been already taken so no more, uh, no more person can be given the first job so we have to cross the remaining zeros in the first row as well as first column so remember this is the rule after making the assignment in a particular cell you consider the row and column of the same particular cell and cross all the zeros so in first row there is no other zero but in first column this zero was present which i have crossed now you move to second row for doing the same in second row there is no zero for allocation so leave it go to third row in third row there is exactly one zero present which i can see at the position three comma two third row second column so there is exactly one zero in the third row so i'll be allocating there i'll be marking the assignment there so you draw a box around that zero and on the similar lines you cross the zero whichever are occurring in the third row and the second column and next you go to the fourth row in fourth row there are two zeros left so one of them i can box the other one i have to cross so you remember in each row and each column there should be exactly one box drawn because this drawing the box means assigning so each row and each column should have exactly one assignment so now you see the all the zeros are either crossed or either boxed so this means the first step is complete this is the assignment we have made first person to first job third person to second job and fourth person to third job but this is not an acceptable solution because the second person is not doing any job you can see no allocation has been made no assignment has been made in second row and similarly 
no assignment has been made in fourth column so that means no one is doing the fourth job so this is not the optimal assignment so mathematically what you just need to check you count the number of boxes so if the number of boxes is less than the size of the matrix so here the number of boxes is 3 but the size of the matrix is 4 cross 4 so 3 is less than 4 therefore this is not an optimal assignment we have to do something else now to get the optimal answer so question is what to do now since we were making boxes at the zeros and the number of boxes are actually turning out to be less than required so that means we have to create more boxes for that we have to create more zeros it brings one more question with itself how to create more zeros so to create more zeros we have to follow another technique in the continu continuation we have to do the covering so you have to cover all the existing zeros either boxed or crossed you have to cover them up you have to secure them up and then only we'll be able to create more zeros so how to do this covering you have to cover them with combination of horizontal and vertical lines and how many lines exactly needs to be used for covering it should be exactly three that means it should be exactly equal to the number of boxes which you have drawn so since you can see three red boxes so that means exactly with three lines i have to cover all the zeros so one way of covering can be i can draw the vertical line in the first column and the second column and the horizontal line in the last row so you can see with this i have covered all the zeros either crossed or boxed no zero is uncovered so covering can be done in another way also like i can also do the covering like this with one vertical and two horizontal so it does not matter whatever way you cover it's not a unique choice but the number of lines cannot be more than three you have to use exactly that many lines to cover whichever was the number of the boxed zeros so after covering out of the remaining uncovered entries i have to pick up the minimum value and that minimum value i can see is highlighted in yellow color which is one so now to create more zeros you subtract this one from all the uncovered entries like 517371 these are the uncovered entries so you subtract this minimum one from all the entries you will get your new values 406260 so that's one thing which we have to do with the minimum and one more thing we have to do with this minimum is you look at the entries which are occurring at the intersection of the horizontal and vertical lines so the entries which are coming at the intersection there you need to add this minimum so which entries i am talking about you can see the entries which are lying on the intersection of the horizontal and vertical lines these entries which are highlighted in yellow color coincidentally the value of both of them is same in this question 2 and 2 so here instead of subtracting the minimum i have to add that minimum so this will make it 3 and 3 because you know the minimum was 1 so what entries have changed the uncovered entries have changed the minimum has been subtracted from them and out of the covered entries only the intersection entries have been changed they have been added the minimum has been added to them and rest entries remain same there is no other change apart from these two changes so after you have introduced these changes now you remove the markings now you remove the lines which you used for covering you remove the boxes which you drew on the first step and you also remove the crosses so whatever are the existing markings on your matrix remove all of them and get a matrix in written in a neat and clean form like this 
so this is kind of your new reduced matrix so you have to repeat the process from here again so we have to start making the assignments again so you look at the first row first row is having two zeros so let's not make an assignment there second row is having two zeros no assignment third row is having exactly one zero so i am choosing the third row for making the assignment in the second column so i have drawn a box over here so you have to first assign at that row which is having the minimum number of zeros and this crosses out this zero also and now you go to the fourth row again two zeros so in row wise still we are having two two zeros in each of the row first second and fourth so let's try to see it column wise now first column is having two zeros third column is having two zeros fourth column is also having two zeros so column wise also there is a tie so you can break the tie arbitrarily so i'm starting from row first again and making an allocation here so at this step you could also make an allocation at the cell 1 comma 3 and crossed the 1 comma 1 so this was an option here so i have broken the tie arbitrarily and done this and similarly in second row now there was only one zero left so i allocated there so in the fourth column the zero has to be crossed because in fourth column one zero has already been boxed and finally i'm left with just the zero present in the third column and the fourth row and this has to be boxed and now at this step you see all the zeros present in the system are either crossed or boxed so that means no more assignments can be made now i have to decide whether this is the optimal assignment or not so since the number of boxes is exactly four so therefore this is a optimal assignment i have got my answer which person has been assigned which particular job so person a a person a has been assigned first job person b has been assigned fourth job person c has been assigned second job and d has been assigned third job so i'm just reading the solution from the table and making you understand how to read it and then if you compute the assignment cost it it should be all the costs should be individually added so the places of the boxes remain the same which you have got in the optimal assignment but while computing the cost you have to look at the values from the original matrix given so it's 20 plus 17 plus 17 plus 24 which makes it 78 so that's the complete solution of the problem considered so the question finishes there only so in the next lecture will be talking about unbalanced assignment problem thank you